Hello, the Rebel One, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And right now, we need to talk about troubles at the bank once again. The strikes have assembled, and once again, the military has dispersed them. Workers claim that a legal maximum amount of sick days is cruel and inconsiderate, but these are dissident. Petty squabbles. Opposing progress for China will be stamped out. Reports also are coming in for massive boycotts of Chinese products by consumers opposed to the introduction of sales taxes. Many are seen destroying Chinese goods and looting stores. Some were even heard chanting that taxation requires representation to be fair. Nothing the army can't fix. But currently we are, so far, doing Japanese teachers still, in which I believe I already read this one yesterday, literacy programs as well as reform the Chinese language. So if you like to read about this one, oh, there goes Mr. Dude again. A day to remember. But if you like to read about this one again, as well as reform the Chinese language, please go right ahead. But we do have some comments to go through, such as someone recommends that we go reformist. Go as reformist as possible. So we'll see. Maybe we'll do that. Let's see. Someone also asks this. Oh, resource extraction. Very nice. Actually, right now, eh, even resource extraction wouldn't do a whole lot of stuff for us. We actually need a little bit of aluminum and rubber, which I'm not going to touch because I want to get as many civvies as possible right now. It is still 63, so we still have some time down here to get that stuff done, get some radar maybe. A lot of the military stuff doesn't really matter too much, since we're probably not really going to go into any conflicts anytime soon, but it is what it is. But someone did ask, can Manchukuo uh, reform the Qing Empire? And, and my answer is most likely not. I don't think it's I don't think it's the dev's intentions to make sure that, or make it possible, that Manchukuo would be able to reform the Chinese Empire, the Qing Empire, so it's unfortunate, but new methods after we select literacy programs. Cool. It's my turn to play. Well, why? Away? You're a big idiot. Louis Jean stamped his feet, two tears pulling up in his eyes. A child's classmate paid little attention to the pouts of the young Chinese boy and kept playing obvious, oblivious. The fr frustration of being ignored built up in Louis, his unbridled rage climaxing within him, smacking the girl upside the head. Smack, smack. Kaito adjusted her glasses nervously as she flicked through the ginormous stack of papers plopped upon her desk. Kaito loved teaching. It was what she was born to do, and she wanted to do something good for those who needed it the most. Combining her aspirations and moving to world China seemed like the obvious answer. Her idealistic passion may have clouded her judgment. This was not what she had envisioned. Kaito was brought back to reality from the nightmare screech from the back of the classroom. Louis hit me, Miss Teacher. Louis hit me. Or Louis. Kaito took a deep breath and put on a soft smile. Now, everyone, we are all friends here. Would you look at... The time. I think it's time we learn each other's names. Why don't you go first, young lady? The schoolgirl wiped her eyes and nodded, wake, walking up to the chalkboard. Slowly and shakily, something that resembled Wei began to take shape on the chalkboard. When she was done, a chorus of my turn and I can do it better erupted from the classroom. Kaito leaned against the wall, her smile now genuine. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad after all. We entrust our children to our friends. Occasion. So, right now, let's just refresh ourselves, because right now we're trying to modernize China, right? As the world's falling apart, but we don't care, because... Well, we're kind of already in a nightmare scenario for ourselves. So we're trying to get more efficiency for industry and education. Right now, our current progress towards education is 9% and goes up by 9.5% every month, which is pretty good. And our industry is currently at one self-sufficiency level, in which we need to get up to five. And our current innovation is 87%. So we need to save our PP up so that when we can do this, we can just go ahead and get the next self-sufficiency level. So we're going to need some PP for that. And we get about 8 every month, and Warsaw is has arisen, which is cool. And uh, we could probably do stuff up here too. What is this? Weekly faction updates. And increase resource shipments to Japan, so we get better consumer goods, so we can get some more civilian factories. So that way, we can get a better GDP and get more uh, liquid reserves. Everything in the world is falling apart. And we get an annual deficit of minus $2 billion a year, which is not too bad. And our annual GDP growth rate is 3.4%, which is also not too shabby if I do say so myself. So... And other comments that ask, so, oh, Vicky3 when, or like what, or just basically you guys are looking forward to me playing Vicky3. Yeah, Vicky3, whenever it comes out, I am ready to go, so that'll be a lot of fun. Even I think we're still waiting for something to kind of blow up around here. Yunnan, I've heard, is a very, very difficult nation to play as, but I do want to play as them sometime. I'm just like, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, it's just, mmm... I don't know. It just That sounds very difficult down there. The literacy reforms. Very nice. Literacy forms the foundation of civilization. Without it, the very conception of the state would not exist. Without it, Zhang Guo would be a backwater no better than the barbarians surrounding her. It is for this reason that literacy must be the central focus of our nation. When the men and women of our nation cannot read, they cannot function to their highest potential. 
The new Committee of Language and Literacy st stated that Hanshi, after 3,000 years of development, had become an unorganized conglomeration of characters. They proposed a gargantuan modernization of the written language to transform it into a writing system of the modern world. No longer will the peasant boy study for years to only give it up, frustrated and at an obsolete system. No longer will the common workers struggle to wrap their minds around the twists and turns of her language. The old China died in Chongqing long ago. Why should its language limp along? Along with the greatest reform to our language in a millennia, the language of the sphere and one of the up-and-coming languages of the world is being taught from primary all the way up to university. Japanese, if we're to truly be a nation of the sphere, we must integrate ourselves fully as part of the new Pan-Asian philosophy. Very, quite promising. And now we have two, and we're not quite there yet. We're at what? One and 18%, and this one is at 95%, so let's save our peepee -pee for now, because that would be good. And then teach Japanese? I don't know. I like promoting higher education. I think that'd be quite good for us to do. I mean, all these are really good to do, but still. Improve factory efficiency? Ooh. And just recruitment will gain progress at the next level. Um, a lot of the stuff I, I think we said last time, it's not bad. This will be good to do, but I think it can. we can just kind of wait for now. Societal improvement? Oh, that's really good. We get a lot of things that will improve ourselves. Iron of Hunan? The Tin of Da Cheng? The Aluminum of Jinan? Adapting resources. That's not bad. I do like that stuff quite a bit, but I want to keep going with education for now as well. Teach the scientists. I do want to get more political power, though, which is down here, right? Research speed, great minds. Yeah, technically, yeah. And let's go and do some overseas teaching. Uh, oversee the teaching. Just because there's a shortage of Chinese teachers does not mean that we're, there ought to be a shortage of curriculum. We must oversee the general curriculum of education so as to prevent any further bias or influence by the Japanese to the youth. After all, they are there to educate, not to indoctrinate. Ah, very good. So 95%. We're getting closer and closer. What else can we do here? Uh, factory opinion, modernization. Cool. And Boggy Smeri is gone. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And that's not too bad. Standardized Kaoshu. Nice. A little bit of lag here and there, the Croatian winter, very nice. Magadan is gone, overseeing the teaching though. And, do we do, oh, we can't, oh, we, we, we gotta wait two days. And Zongwu's cabinet, there's a particularly sturdy rumor. It speaks of a great national project, one to define China for decades, it is not, however, some great monumental <clears throat> building, nor is it. Some long meandering road or roadway or railway it is not a technological modernization of the cities. It is something far greater than all of these. These whispers are of a project to simplify collective 3,000 years of Chinese. It is a project of modernization, but more than that, it is a project to innovate the very fire of China, the spirit that propels us all. It is a project to renew China as we were renewed in the Great Taiping Rebellion, as we were renewed during the 1911 revolution by making our language more accessible to all people. Everybody in Zhang Guo will enjoy the works of Lu Fi Kui and Jian. Zhu, Zhuang Tong. Standardized Kao Shu has the potential to become not only the most common in China, but also evolve into a global language. The leading grammarians and linguists of China have convened in the hope of this shared Chinese vision, one of a Chinese language for many, not the few. Let's hope this works, and if you liked about this, please go right ahead. I believe I read this yesterday, so. Construction, production, or computing technology. We're going to go with more industry, because when we hit 65, we will definitely, definitely, definitely want that. So, it's still going up by 8%, so we got to save some PPP for this, but we can spend some PPP if we need to do so. Such as, we go all the way down here, and expand state-owned industries, which is not bad. It does hurt our civvies. Ooh, what happened to our bonus here? That's not good. Unfortunately, we have no copy for this episode, but whatever. Um, yeah, keep doing that one. There you go. That we got to have that one. There you go. That's a little better. Just build, 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 build. We'll actually get one done in, by the end of the month. But happy 1964, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. And gods of the north. Very nice. Cooperation with the Japanese intellectual or intellectuals. We'll lose some pee, pee but that's not bad. The decay for them will go down. So, although they are our overlords, for the time being, we must collaborate with the intellectuals of Japan if we are to have any chance in one day establishing our national sovereignty and rightful place as a central pin of the Eastern world. In exchange for guiding us in our modernization programs, we will have to provide some concessions, which makes absolutely some sense. Span cut, and don't worry about that too much. Nice. Not too bad. Overall, not too bad. I mean, obviously, it's... I wouldn't want to be living in China here, especially this time, but hey, transistor computing is done very, very nice. So we can't do anything here until 1970, which is fine. Um, actually, this stuff is kind of modern as well. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, aircraft, or, eh, I'll keep going down this way, maybe. Get some more fuel, maybe. How much, do we get any fuel at all? No, we don't, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, let's go over here. Artillery, you can keep boosting up some artillery, I guess. It really doesn't matter too much, but it's all right. It is a-okay. Overseeing the teaching. 
And this uh, The Japanese teacher we were able to acquire are now being monitored by our own native curriculum to root out any deceitful charlatans who might tarnish the education given with indoctrinating biases or influences. It will also be an opportunity to ensure that the good Chinese culture is being maintained and kept alive rather than left to weather and die like what is happening in Korea or practically all of Europe. Imperialism shall never be distilled in our youth. Well, not just just not too much imperialism, but working as equals. The Japanese and Chinese teachers have come together for a greater goal to encourage the education of our populace out of betterment of our intellectually starving populace. We will work with them and for now establish our material administrative prosperity for both China and Japan. More stability, research speed, construction speed. That's really good for us. State of education will become poor. Increase Japanese influence by four and opinion by five. Reformers goes down, so we might want to appease the reformists a little bit more. Which will happen later on as well, so. But I do want to get even more construction speed as well, so that's going to be super de super de important. And actually, can we increase our reformer, reformist influence yet? Not really. Uh, that increases growth, which I do like, but I do not want to hurt our consumer goods factories. Increase influence by 10, which is not bad, too. I don't like this one at all. We're not going to choose this one probably at all, so. Invest in Chinese companies. We need more liquid reserves. Uh, that one's, this one's okay. Uh, I'm reading this, you get more growth, which is nice, but you don't get any more construction speed. Uh, okay, so you gain one civilian factory in a state with three building stocks. Okay, so that one's not too bad then, actually. It does cost 50 PP, but increase annual GDP growth by 0.5%. Oh, gain two civilian factories in two states with a free building slot. Or a military factory in a state with free building slots. Well, that's okay. Modernization awareness campaign. Eh. And reformists in the cabinet. We lose political power. Oh, uh, you get more influence and stuff. So we might choose that one, but I don't want to lose PP. So, a cooperation with the Japanese intellectuals. We strive to become a sovereign nation, a shining light of the Eastern Hemisphere, however. There's no chance of us being able to do this without a modernization program, specifically that of education and reunification, which we will need to be spearheaded by overlords of Japan. In return for the logical, intellectual, and foundational support, we will provide them with our resources as a request. A little help is all that we need. And right now it's 30%, 52, 34%. And we'll work on that. Encourage intellectuals. We can no longer allow for an unchecked reliance on foreign intellectuals if at this point. We are perfectly capable of producing our own. We ought to encourage our own intellectuals who will be able to guide China into the reforms it is soon to undertake with grace and excellency. Nice. More intellectuals, please. God, this reminds me so much of Vicky 2, which I love. Love, 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 love. Alright, so anything else here? Support old guard interests, probably not. We're not going to bribe them. Clamp oh, we get clamped down on corruption. Hurts our pee people. Get more construction speed. Oh. Ooh. Oh, man. That hurts our construction speed just by a little bit. Now they're 52%. Well, this goes up a little bit more. Construction speed dead goes up or immediately. Oh. Okay. Pierre, hello? Yes, and that's what I thought. Invest in private businesses. That's a 50% chance of increasing our civilian factories. We lose some consumer goods right now. Um, Increase GDP growth by 0.3%. 20% chance of getting nothing? Is this worth it? Oh, remove $500 million from liquid reserves. Gain additional annual expenses, whatever. Increase reformers opinion. Get more growth, which is okay. Consumer goods factories. One of four options will happen. 15%, 30%, 35%, 20% chance. So, there, we could get a civilian factory, or get GDP will receive a small boost. Is that really worth it? I don't mind doing this one, maybe, instead, because you guaranteed a civvy, so... Let's do that one. It's a little cheaper, too, anyway, so... Right now, we're 59%, and we're 16%, so... Not too bad, actually. That's pretty good. Working as equals. Instructors from both Japan and China now work collaboratively... Or now collaborate for higher education purposes of bringing our intellectually starving populace to a better future, refining humanities and sciences. We will work with them for the material, administrative, and economically collective prosperity for all the co-prosperity sphere. Alone, we are weak. Together, we are strong. Wow, look at reserves. That's a lot. That looks like a lot of money, but it's not really, is it? Probably not. We have no fuel now. God dang it. And then we'll go ahead and do great minds to get even more political power. At one point in our history, China had dominated the intellectual world. The Europeans have already implemented courses, teachings, or teaching on the innovations of the great philosophers of the past. So why shouldn't we get more research speed, more political power? The reformists will like us a little bit more. So that's all good stuff. All really, really, really good stuff. And we currently get 0.46 political power every single day. Not enough. But it'll work for now. Nice. How, how are the factories? 20 and 4. It's never enough. At 64, this will be done by the end of the month. This one will be done probably by June or January. Okay. Wow, that's a long ways away. 
1.116. Oh, that's not as good as it used to be, huh? Oil processing, alright, not bad. And I'm also do some rubber stuff because he can. Encourage intellectuals. We are the point in which we can nurture, raise, and encourage our own intellectuals who assist us as we venture into the complete modernization reforms of China with grace and excellency. Foreign intellectuals will still work with us. Utase is gone. However, they will no longer be exclusive in their pursuits, and we will now monitor our reliance on them. To think is to be. Very nice. Performance in the cabinet. Is there anything else here we can do yet? Nope. All oh, right. Actually, what's this one? Private businesses. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a pretty risky. 50% chance. 80%? Awesome. We actually might consider keeping our PP for now, then. Ooh, old guard in the cabinet. Um, invite Japanese companies. You do get more construction speed and stuff like this, and it does increase your GDP, potentially. Oh, decrease our formus, though. I don't know about that one. Domestic consumption. That is not great. Eventually. Eventually. They're only 30%, which kind of sucks. They have a negative opinion of us. Yeah, we definitely need more reformist influence and such. But, promote higher education? Might as well, right? Education information is limitless, and attempting to study all of it in a general, all-encompassing manner is not impossible. We must try to encourage higher education to those that truly seek to excel in their field of study beyond even the standard mandated curriculum. Great minds. Scarcely a few centuries ago, China dominated the intellectual world, with the powers of Europe and the West failing to come close to our splendor and majesty of our lands until the Renaissance caused them to lurch ahead. Striving to return to these times, we implemented courses, teaching, and building upon what once was revolutionary from the great philosophers, just like the West. We just don't think alike, but higher. Oh, absolutely. I'll uh, save our PP for now. We'll get there for, towards... Eh, maybe, maybe not. Mm, I'm, uh, uh. I don't want her to consume goods right now as much as possible. But after this one, we'll go with Teach Japanese. Stability. Educational progress gain would be nice. I really... I, as you can tell, I'm really... Like, barely down this way. Increasing civil spending. Probably get better. Okay, teach Japanese. Japanese is a lingua franca of the Dai Tawa Kaiokan, or the Copra Spirit Sphere, probably. It is the language of our overlords to gain our freedom and defeat Japan. We must first understand Japan, if you know, or Japanese. If you know the enemy, know yourself. You need not fear the results of a hundred battles. The problem is usually when you don't know yourself. And you don't prepare just in case for bad things that could happen. And we'll do a lot of this stuff. And we'll probably come back over here to do a lot more of the technology stuff. I'll only do industry stuff. Now, there was another comment saying that uh, the AI is kind of geared towards like prioritizing one tree at a time. So like doing all education and then doing all technocracy or technocracy technology and then doing all industrialization. So I don't want to do it like that just because it makes more sense for us to like um, do all three. Not at the same, pretty much at the same time. Pretty much at the same time. Of course, trying to balance things out is always a little bit of an issue, but promote higher education. We no longer live in the era which one man can be a polymath in every subject and is able to study and discover the hidden secrets of the limitless breadths of knowledge. More colleges, universities, and opportunities for higher education have been established, and soon anyone will be able to ex excel in their field uh, of, of study beyond what is mandated by the state. Perhaps it's time for us to go back to school. Eh, maybe just might. You might just need to. So we're 90... Oh, is this going up by 10... 11.5%? God dang, so in about a week we can do that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. New excavation equipment. Uh, Ramp up military production. That's going to hurt us a little bit more. We get more reformers, we get more military factories. I don't really care about that, Rose. But we're going to race down here, educating the countryside. What use would our educational program have if it only impacts the people in the cities? A modern country does not leave its countryside behind. Let us reach out and start bringing the light of education to all corners of the country. Beautiful, Batman. Absolutely wondrous. But we need more money in our liquid reserves, which I have not actually touched yet. We have less than a billion dollars in deficit. What are we building? Bigger divisions or something? That sucks. And we're currently at 48% here, so... I'm really focusing on education right now, as you can tell. Oh, better artillery? That's nice, I guess. Just in case we really do need it. Bigger divisions even... Yeah, yeah, those guys use it, which is nice. You guys don't, but, yeah, whatever. Teaching Japanese. Oh, and let's go ahead and invest, or advance the education. Nice. A new generation of bright minds. I think I read this one yesterday, so if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Uh, production efficiency cap and ooh, more even more political power. Political power can always be used to accelerate things, right? So, and stability is really nice. More humanities. Teaching Japanese for the last two decades, Japan has played the role of puppet master, pulling all the strings in Asia. After Japan's decisive victory over the Western powers, they emerged as an unmatched power on the world stage. The far-reaching rays of the rising sun stretch across the largest empire of the largest continent. 
from the distant heights of Himalayas to the swamps of Borneo, men of the rising sun control business, culture, and society. When Chinese businessmen grow into this Japanese-dominated world without even basic knowledge of the language, they are unable to survive at the point of beyond the local level. Without the ability to communicate with the Zaibatsus, and the Japanese economic and political institutions that dominate Asia, China is doomed to fail. It's important that we teach Japanese to our young students. Already, programs across eastern China have instructed Chinese students on Japanese now. More widespread educational programs in rural areas will properly prepare our cult pupils for the world in which they will grow. For the modernization of China and for the appeasement of our lords to the west, it must be done for the greater good. And let's also go ahead and to... Yeah, this was really good to expand public schools. Decades of war and instability have taken their toll upon our public school system. In order to continue our country's betterment, we must use whatever resources we can muster to rebuild our public schools to an acceptable standard, so as to have the brain power to continue the modernization. Absolutely. More land and attack is bueno, bueno, bueno. And there goes President Kennedy. America's not having a good time right now, I bet. Really not having a good time. So 0% and 48%, so... Oh, it is two. We're both two here, so that's actually really, really good. Oh, we only have 29 million. Holy crap. Gotta keep building it up. 3.5% is not enough. It's a little bit... Yeah! Screw it, we got a blueprint for this. I want to build it even faster. 25, not bad. No, it's not too bad. And, okay, so at this point, how is the industry stuff down here? We're still doing that, which is nice. We do have 50. I don't want to hurt us. I... Mm. Oof, I don't want to do that, but we, I want more influence for these guys. 30 influence? No, this will give us more influence. Increase reformist faction influence by 5%. We'll do it once. Now they're 33%, which is not 5%, but okay. They're 52%. Negative opinion? Negative opinion, which is really not good, but that. But this balances out with the construction speed, so we lost the PP. We can only get 0.66 every single day. And now, oh, we lost this other one too. Oh, that's not good. Just do that one for sin. By the end of the month, we'll have another city to use, which would be nice. And then we'll go and do expand public schools. In every corner. The disparity between the wealthy and laborers of China have hung in a precarious balance as far back as written history goes, dating back to ancient Chinese kingdoms. Social and economic stratification has been the terrible norm. The emperor ruled over his nation with unfettered authority. The serfs and peasants were resigned to labor for the entirety of their lives. The nobles and the children lived lives in the upper crust, removed from the squalor that lay below them. It is this fundamental problem that led to the rise of Mao's fiefdom and the splintering of the Kai Shek government. We will not follow down the same path of failure. This inequality remains today, but there is one sector that can be easily remedied education. If we're to march forward, unified our children and their children must be given proper education. They will be taught to read and write, mathematics, and the history of Zhongguo. The Chinese nation will be the great educator. Imagine the strength of May 4th movement. If every student from Gansu to Hainan participated, imagine a nation unified by one educational system, each student driven to make his nation great. It is something never before dreamed, and yet we dare to dream it. Imagine no longer, and do we want to educate the poor? We probably do. We probably really do. But we'll do this one. Night schools. Our place as a breadbasket of the co-prosperity sphere has led the overwhelming majority of our populace to be laborers under Japanese oversight. To accommodate for the people, we must create night schools where they will be able to seek an education without sacrificing national productivity or jeopardizing our reputation within the sphere. The student. Shi Meng ate his rice in silence. Rain was coming in. The clouds danced swiftly across the sky. Putting down his bowl, he got back to work. His break was over. Picking up his tools and pulling up the bottom of his pants, he trudged back onto the field, tilling the fields of cabbage for what seemed like their 50th time this day. His mind couldn't help but to wander to whatever 12-year-olds think about. I don't know, that's an awkward age. She rarely re left the farm, unless he was grabbing groceries in town. He was born, raised, and lived in the fields. It was. It might be boring, but his family had done it for generations. There was no sign that it would ever change. The fields were she's home, and like any home. They offered security, albeit a dull one. The closest connections to the outside world were when tax collectors and census takers trudged out here, in the middle of nowhere, to collect any meager money and count the meager people. There were rumors or murmurs of modernization, but these were nothing but vague rumors to Xi's parents, and meant nothing to himself. The most modernization they had seen was a tractor a neighboring family owned. The boy was walking back to his hut when his parents yelled for him to come quick. Running with a rake in his right hand, and his box for lunch in his left, he pushed open the door to see his parents sitting with an unfamiliar man. She was instantly concerned. Had a relative passed away? Were the Japanese finally here to snatch away his parents? The man turned towards Xi and smiled. He began speaking in a sh Shanghai accent, cosmopolitan and formal the model urban lingo. Hello, Xi. Your parents and I were talking about uh, the new school opening in town. Old gymnasium. Also off-screen. Oh, we didn't get to the other focus yet. We're still expanding public schools. But we have a problem. Oh, we actually... Well, well, well there goes Archer. Okay, so before we faded out... Well, after I faded in and faded out, we, we're actually running a 
a deficit. Um, it was, well, it was very weird. We were literally running a deficit, but now we're not. So I'm a little concerned because that's not really good. Uh, we need to get back our civvies. So at this point, I don't really want to do anything else here that uh, could hurt our civvies quite a bit. Chinese education says it's slowly getting better, which is really good. But legislative Wuhan faction effects, whatever for now. Uh, manning the factories, not too bad. We have exploiting the population, which we is okay. Arsenal, the co-prosperity sphere, which is good. This one's Japan's breadbasket we need to get rid of. Subpar education, which we'll work on. The Defang Tiger's not great. Small army, of course, can't do too much. And that's not too great either. But the facilities, once we go ahead and click on night schools. Greetings, Mr. President. The colorful banner hung across the entrance of the decrepit school, adorned with children's drawings of the national flag among fields of flowers. Beneath the banner sat rows of children, gal figured maybe 50 with one teacher standing behind them. The Chinese president gave a sad smile, staring up at the banner. Could be worse, he thought to himself. The previous school had welcomed him as President Gao Hongchu. <laughs> as he ascended the makeshift stairs, Gao was careful to avoid the cracks in the aging wood. An elderly gentleman who introduced himself as Mr. Zhi Fang uh, gave an impassioned introduction to the children. Kids, as you know, we are in the presence of a tremendous man, a leader who is pulling China out of its rut it has found itself in. Why doesn't everyone say hello to the most esteemed president? The crowd responded merrily with a chorus of greetings. Gal couldn't help himself. A real smell began to form. Maybe things weren't so bad after all. Any hope of a successful visit died as soon as he stepped foot in the building. The smell hit him first, and the pipes dripping with water, then the hole in the ceiling. Gal dropped his head and let out a defeated sigh. There was still so much work to be done, obviously. He made a mental note to add special guidelines for maintaining the property. Despite his visual disappointment, the principal turned and continued to lead the president around the school. Room after room, Gal noted infraction after infraction. The bathrooms were a hotbed for illness. The teachers had no clue what the curriculum was. And the students arrived at school hours late, exhausted from walking the entire journey here. Finally, after all was said and done, Gal returned to his limousine and went over to the shortcomings of the school. He drafted a list of guidelines for all schools to meet, chiefly with sanitation, but below it was providing reasonable transport, convenience, quality education, instilling patriotism, and having properly educated teachers. The trip may have been a failure, but the knowledge gained would be invaluable. Potential crisis averted. Yeah, you could probably still see that in America today, nowadays, too. If you go into the really bad areas. No, there we go. Now we actually have a deficit again. Well, that's really not good. So I guess we can't spend any more for money because we can't. We literally can't afford to have a deficit. So this this is not good. Whew, this is not good at all. Because um, we need extra money. I don't want to have to lower construction spending, but I will if we have to. So here we go. So if, let's close this up. So now we're four hundred some. We got to cut this. Oh oh, I don't want to cut this. I really don't. Military spending is so small, anyways. Total expenditures is quite bad right now. I don't want to do this. Uh, we're already eighteen. 0.65, we're going to lose even more, but we have to have a deficit. Uh, oh, we still have a deficit even if we cut it. Nah. 0.52, this is not good. I don't want to cut this down because we went to 18 to 15. Oh. We got to get some consumer factories. Probably do about like no PP. Uh, we're at 64% and down here we're at 30%. This is not good, man. Um, scholarships for the poor. Costing more GDP? I think we gotta wait then. I just, we're just not ready there. We're not there yet. That's not good. Mm, evolution of culture. That's not bad. I do like that one. Teaching art. To get more PP. Would be good. More stability, more war support, more research speed, more construction speed. Ooh. Education will be improved, which is nice. Factory efficiency, more innovation. I like that. It's still 64. So actually, let's go ahead and grab this one just because we could use the blueprints. Pretty darn soon, improving factory efficiency. Alongside the standardization of the physical factories comes a similar set of reforms to those who labor within. Strictly scheduled shift work and informed quote estimates will assure that the machines are still never still are never still for longer than a heartbeat. The left arm of liberation. An unfortunate side effect of Japan's economic dominance of our nation is that our people are robbed of opportunity. The all too common life of a laborer is simple wake up, go to work, return home, eat if you're so fortunate, and repeat. The schedule leaves no room for appreciation of the arts or something as simple as learning to read or write. The obvious solution would be to set aside a portion of the day for education, but due to harsh quotas placed by the Zaibatsus. This is out of question, so we have to choose a more unorthodox approach. When night falls and weary workers return home, the lessons will begin. Women and men alike will be, must be educated. The hearts of our nation lies in education, not just in our youngest, but for all of us. There's always time for education. Okay, so now at least we have a little bit of a deficit, so maybe we'll not cut any more, but we are, we're rocking a tightrope right now. Smolsk? Is that, is that new? Hey, Zim Cha Zorn, a libertarian socialist. He seems, seems kind of happy. Maybe it's because he loves uh, libertarian socialism, maybe. Uh, more monthly gain. Oh, we could get some new civvies. Oh, that'd be really good. 
throughout a country. That's really not bad. Um, if that's the case, synthetic factories, rubber fields would not be bad. Actually, oh, we could get energy. Ah, let's go this way. Synthetic refineries next. We cannot rely on nature alone to grant us the resources we need. Fortunately, man is advanced enough to be able to synthesize its own resources like oil and rubber. We just need to allocate some funding for these factories and we will end up one step closer to modernity. We want to do that and get more refiners because then we get oil we can use. And then we get rubber, which we could potentially trade away, which I think would be very, very good. Ooh, that's going to hurt us, but we do get a civilian factory. <clears throat> the other local funds, we gotta do that one. It's only 15 PP2. Uh, 72%, 42%, so we gotta wait. Sold out of everything. Oh boy. Actually, limit so bar, bribe them, limit crackdown of corruption, not there. Yep. Uh, Olympics, thank you very much. And synthetic refineries. Chinese manufacturing has grown at an astonishing pace in the last several years. As in more factories begin manufacturing goods, we are becoming more equated with the finer details of running a large-scale industrial economy due to the low prices of goods in the massive Chinese market. Retailers are routinely running out of stock as products sell faster than they are made. Several figures in the government recommended various methods to solve this problem, building company housing. Now the factories will greatly reduce commuting times for the workforce. Building factories near the source of the raw materials will cut down on transportation costs. Clustering factories that produce individual parts of final products will make assembly much quicker and easier. These are only a few examples of the steps that are being taken to reduce waste in all forms. While each new measure only improves their efficiency by a small amount, the cumulative effect is an industry that is on par with that of the other nations and is capable of supplying the massive and increasingly consumerist Chinese population. We must be sure to maintain the balance between supply and uh, demand. The old gymnasium. She woke up to a dawning morning. Today was the first day of school, and like any other boy and girl in China, he was nervous. The regular anxiety of a simple boy was only magnified by the sudden need for education. He would be much prefer to stay with the family, however. She did dream of a larger world. Sometimes he daydream of seeing the world beyond his town. She jumped onto his rattled bike, seeing flying pigeon. In the crisp morning air, the mountains of the Gobi Desert, with all their unwelcome beauty, were barely visible to him. The sun peeked over the mountaintops, making the path just a bit brighter, flanked on both sides by the towering hanging peaks. She's bike bumped along on the way to town. Rounding a corner, the lights of his farm disappeared behind him. Somewhere ahead of him was a school he had a long way to go. The trip was long. The nearest school was four dozen kilometers away. Luckily, Shi's parents were not the ones to give in and skip out on the new education reform. Shi Meng, whether he liked it or not, would be the first to read in his family since the time immemorial. Hit the book, Shi. Hit him hard. Uh, oil would be nice, but we can use this to trade. The rubber fields of the south. Our southern provinces are rich with rubber. If we could extract that rubber and exploit it, it could make us one step further on a quest for industrialization. And we get new income, which is what we pretty much need immediately. Like, this is not good. <laughs> More base bleed, though. It is almost 65. I'm just going to go and do stuff here. We get less cap. Wait, did we choose this way? Why did I choose the left one? This one's better. Um... Did I seriously choose this way? I might literally just go back and do this because I want those max factories in the state, and we get more output. We need more output, but I don't. I don't care about growth too much. I'll be honest. Um, honestly, uh, we need more max factories in the state. I think that can that can kind of wait for now. We're not going to run out of stuff, so we're going to wait for industry or research stuff like that. Attrition planning. That's not too bad. We'll do that one. Yeah, that just makes sense for us. So keep that money for now. Keep that money. Keep that PP. Pee 0.52 could be worse could be a lot worse still and 85% and not terrible not great oh my god but oh boy but after synthetic refineries um it seems like we're making a deficit anyways yeah i definitely want to get down here so we can at least get some more consumer goods factories i think we could really really use that i do want to do more innovation stuff here but we're doing i'd say we're doing pretty darn well already so, oh we actually get another research slot that's actually really cool. The older town. The village rose into view and she let out a sigh. It was finally here. The town was just waking up somewhere a rooster crowed. A man walked along the desert road. Oh, look at that. Uh, dirt street, stringing, ringing a bell and waking up any stragglers. Stopping by his flying pigeon, she asked a sleepy village person where the school was. The man pointed down the street to the old recreational hall. The dingy gymnasium had gone unused for many years. The imprints of the twelve-pointed sun long gone still left their mark on the wall. Old efforts led by the Republican government to lead the peasants of China forward had resoundingly failed. The recreation the room sat as a vestige of an earlier era, one without the looming Japanese overlord. One of war and hope. The gym was a blemish upon the village, a simple ruin. This time, China would not recede back to the forgotten hope left after the war. She was early. He didn't know how to read a clock, but the lack of both teacher and student get was a giveaway. As the sun finally pushed its daily transit over the horizon, the town quickly became alive. In no time, the students, both eager and miserable, funneled into the makeshift school. And the teacher rolled in school supplies and carts full of textbooks. Is this school? I guess so, yeah. 53, 85, not terrible. Uh, what is this? Support them? No. 
Stamp out the zealots. That, I don't know why we would do that one. I, mean, I guess if we want to go Japanese or old guard, but yeah, not really interested in that one. The liquefying cult. In terms of sheer resources, China stands unparalleled. No other nation is scattered with so much potential energy practically seeping out of the rocks. Yeah, we lack access to oil, that black gold. In the case we lose Japanese trade and there's subsequent oil access to oil, we must have a fallback to keep our industries chugging. During the war, German scientists pioneered a method where coals compress in a liquid form and function similar to heavier kerosene. If the procedure is done incorrectly, it can very easily result in loss of life and is extremely inefficient. After getting access to the oil fields <coughs> of the Caucasus, the Germans entirely stopped using this complex method. We have little choice, however. Uh, oil, synthesi oil synthesizing, with the help of weather German advisors, is to begin immediately. How does one even compress coal? You ask a lot of questions, and you might receive. Nice. We get two synthetic refineries throughout our country. So now, we're actually making a little bit of fuel. Unrest in the southwest. Oh boy. A disturbing report from our agents from the province of Jinan has arrived. A riot has broken out at Heiqing Prison, where several dangerous criminals, including Yang Long Yun, previous ruler of Yunnan, and Lu Han's cousins, are at least were held. The prisoners quickly overwhelmed the guards and are currently holed up inside the prison, preparing to defend themselves. Lu Han dispatched a small force to put down the insurrection, but many justifiably fear that his this small rebellion could grow into a revolution if mishandled. Lu Han's personal fife, it seems, is not as tranquil as it appears, worrying and the refinery at Jinan. At first, the sight of wire towers on the outskirts of Jilan seemed odd, out of the place even for the moderately urbanized city in central Shandong. The framework of the towers became structured, and now the towers are the centerpiece to a massive synthetic fuel operation located on the Jinan coal mine campus. With these refiners operating efficiently, any stoppage in our oil supply will not disrupt our war machine. It's better to be safe than sorry. The teacher. The teacher was originally from outside Nanjing, born during the war. Her mother was killed during the Nanjing incident, and while she didn't remember, she certainly noticed the lack of a mother in her life. Both she and her lonely father averted fervently, hated the Japanese. By the time she pursued a career in teaching Chinese calls for teachers out west, had already been put out. She reported eagerly. The frontier seemed to call her in all the traumatic glory. An old automobile drove her into the village, the sort that dotted China, a fish in the biggest sea in the world. Driving through, she methodically noted the different homes. The mayor's office, a little edifice with about five races flag, lay in the center. Down the road from the office lay an old gymnasium where the new school would be. A few shops lay along the road, doubling his homes for the shopkeepers. There was still little else, though. Though roads led to cabbage farms outside the town, was also urgent. Today, she would be, get settled in her new house, a little apartment complex set up for teachers. It must have been the first building built in the last 50 years. What the heck have I got myself into? But now, there ain't no manpower. Disarm nation is not very good. And the mad king of the southwest. And you not, a terrible king has arisen. In a previous time, long removed from the current age, he was a warlord of the southwest. His rule of Yunnan was brutal and his allegiance to the old republic firm. After the advent of new regimes across China, he was sent to prison. Lu Han, the Japanese-backed leader, began instituting reforms that promoted economic exploitation and widened rifts between the native groups that occupied the region. Day after day, the mountains and forests were chopped down and their bounty sent to Japan. Strangely, Long Yun has returned in force. In a shocking coup, the Yunnanese government has been destroyed and replaced by Long's regime of national renewal. Prison has changed him. Now he swears allegiance to the old Chinese leaders and pledges to enact revenge on every single Japanese sympathizer. Um, and Han Jian of the war. He will stop at nothing to enact revenge, revenge on those who believe destroyed China. Oh, do we have at least have 10 days here left? Mm. Oh, that, uh, I want to get this one done though. We need that income. Actually, let's wait to do that one just because... We did cut down military spending, and I don't want to fight this without any extra military spending, so... Hmm. Let's get this one. Nice. Mackie and Southwest. Now we actually have 100 PP. This is weird. There's a lot of PP we have. Sabotage Japanese? Japanese files. Increase the form faction by 5. That's not bad. Um, These guys really don't like us. Yeah, these guys are fine. The old guard doesn't really care for us, but... Sabotage wouldn't be bad. I like the construction speed. Old Guard in the Cabinet, bribe them, limit Old Guard influence, that hurts us quite a bit, and then stamp them out and invite the Japanese companies, we need more money in our liquid, a lot more money in our liquid reserves for this one. That's not too bad though, if we get a lot more liquid reserves, it increases the Informist faction and Old Guard faction, and when removed, you might get some stuff, and gain two civilian factories in two states with free building or, or one military factory, which is okay. And reform the cabinet, which turns our PP stability, but you do get more war support, so. Hmm. That's not too bad. But we do want to save it for this one. Can we innovate? Please, please, please let us innovate. And now, happy 1965, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. 
Oh, we need more money in our reserves. God dang it. Arrgh. Southern rubber. At least we got it done. It's impossible to facilitate a modern military order of battle without rubber. The thick, icky, rubbery sap does little in its natural form, but when refined rubber can serve money roles in the military structure, it is, this, it is for this reason that, upon Japan's victory in the Pacific War, the rubber fields in the south were given as an exclusive harvesting concession to a Japanese conglomerate. If we could somehow weasel ourselves out of this deal, we could perhaps have access to this rich source of sappy gold. Get the taps ready. Yum yum. And new tree, right? And we're supposed to... We're forced to do this stuff. The return of the king. The Mad Dong Long Yun's seizure of power in Yunnan does not bode well for our government. Far too many of the peasants of the countryside have already flocked to the so-called king of Yunnan, failing or falling for his libellous propaganda against our government and misplaced anger against our Je Japanese partners. His fanatical rebellion against China will only grow stronger with each day that we can, that we ignore it. We must resolve ourselves to act quickly and decisively if we wish to blunt this insurrection and restore order and peace to this wayward corner of country and prevent all of China from befalling the same fate. Or we just let it happen. Which also sounds like a lot of fun, but I want to make sure the next time we get up here, we don't cut down spending and rubber runs thick. One of the concessions given to China in the post-war period was the empowerment of the Chinese state with the separation of Chinese law from the Japanese system. Given that Japan technically recognizes us as a sovereign partner state, our laws apply on our soil no matter who it is that does what. It is on this premise that our, one of our labor inspectors uh, dropped in on a few Japanese rubber plantations to preserve or observe labor conditions. What the inspector found did not please him in following reports of multiple violations of Chinese labor laws, the plantations being shut down. The fees we push onto the Japanese conglomerate outweigh that land value, and an illegal deal for fee, fee forgiveness, we have acquired rights to the field. Know your rights. And we still have a deficit, so that's not too bad. Land net attack will definitely come in handy here. So, all right. More defense? That sounds great for us, because these guys suck arenos. They suck pretty badly. We need more anti-tank and stuff. Um, we have one spare gun. Yeah, so we have this division, which is not bad. We actually have armor on these guys, which is actually really cool. And engineers, and artillery, and recon. But these guys, the Jun Tuan, I'm not really sure what that means, but probably like militia or something. It's for combat with, which is something I never use. And they have this too, so go figure. Alright, so without cutting down... Oh, we still... We're at 16... I'm, I don't want to cut it down because that hurts our PP gain too, but the students. Teaching a bunch of rowdy teens and tweens and teenagers how to read was challenging, but it was a challenge that she was willing to undertake. Dragging her chalk to the, on the chalkboard and squeaking out her name, Li Zhu, she sighed at the task ahead of her. Reciting her name and making sure each student knew, she began the task she was here to do teach. But in the middle of the day, Li had already spotted her favorite students. They were those who had an innate love of learning, and there were those who lacked that love. Li made sure to remind herself that these were the most... They're the future of China, and all deserve to be taught the same. More importantly, they were they they were they were to be the ones that would hopefully put an end to the Japanese stranglehold. It is improper and certainly illegal for her to share her true beliefs with the students, but deep and down, she hoped that her teaching would prepare the generation that would unhinge the Yama Yamato grip. I hope the pen shall make them stronger with their swords. Cool. So we're going to try this. We're not going to cut or spend any more because if we spend more, we're not going to have a deficit, and we need it. Some liquor reserves. We need that oogly oogly money. Try to talk long down. What if I don't do any of this? What if I just don't do anything? Oh, volunteer only. You lose a lot of political power. You get more population, which is nice. Oh, wow. When we cut our stuff, cut the military spending, we got we got rid of a third of a million men. War sport, I think, would be really good. Let's try to talk him down. 20 years in Haiching prison would dull the mind of any man. Oh, there goes Bennett. But surely this Long Yun is not so entirely impervious to reason and diplomacy. He must know that ours is a government dedicated to reform already in the process of self-strengthening and turning China into a country independent and proud again. He must know that we can work together with our fellow Asian countries for the mutual benefit of us all. And he must know that his rebellion will not succeed and that his misguided patriotism will only lead to the nation to further ruin. Perhaps he can still be negotiated with before he becomes committed to his treason against China. Yeah, man, we're, we're both literally working for the betterment of China here. Please don't screw this up. Please don't screw this up. But it might give us some benefits with the Japanese if we say we have a rebellion in one of our uh, southern states. Oh. Find a few reasonable men for more stability. The scoundrel Long Yun may style himself the king of Yunnan, but he does not truly rule over his rebellious province alone. There must be those underneath him, generals, community leaders, who are more prepared than Long as well to do what is necessary to ensure peace continues to reign after all. At least some of his underlings must be sane, and why would any sane man follow this crazed lunatic's treasonous march to a certain doom? Now, actually, that would be good to do to warn him about the Long Yun threat, but I want to do this way because I want stability and war support. That'll give us more defense in, on core territory, but the answer... Any mail for me? Gao knew the answer before asking. Obviously, he would have the mail. Legislators demanding special treatment, Japanese businessmen seeking deals, but he was only searching for one thing. Had Long Yun wrote him back? Not the kind you're looking for, Mr. President. We haven't heard anything from the Southern Psychopath. 
Of course, well, it could have gone lost. I'll wait a few more days for his response. I doubt they have a good postal service down there. Whatever you say, Mr. President. The President's aide left the room, shutting the door behind him. Gal was left in the room alone. The threat of a mad dog was real, but all men could be reasoned with. The President had learned this with much working in the Foreign Service. Maybe. You have to write a follow-up in the meantime? Yes, that'd do. Long Yoon would come to his senses likely before Gal could even finish his letter. Or his next letter. It'll arrive soon. Right? A diplomatic approach to the most esteemed Long Yoon. It is my understanding of my government that you rebel against a system because we are weak? Because we live in the past? You ignore the progress we've made in recent months. I can see this comes with the aid of the co-prosperity sphere which you dread so much, Mr. Yoon. I offer you one question. Have you ever had the fate of millions weigh on your back? Your revolutionary zeal is admirable and certainly welcome the new China we're building, but Mr. Yoon, do you comprehend this is not a fairy tale? Take off your rose glasses and look at the world around you. China is not the same situation it was in your youth before your tenure in prison. The world has changed and you haven't. We're both revolutionaries. I define myself as a pragmatist, however. We can only pull China out of the past from which you live in with the assistance from our Asian brothers. We aren't in a situation to provide for ourselves and no amount of blood will pay for the uh, newest assembly line. I empathize with you, Mr. Yoon. On occasion, I can feel trapped, trapped by paperwork, by the incomprehensible babbling of the Yuan, or my legacy. Channel this passion for the home we love so much into working with us, not against us. I strongly urge you to reconsider your ambitious plan before it spirals out of your, your or my control. I look forward to your response, Gao Zongwu, President of the Republic of China. Surely he'll listen to reason, right? Right? Oh, try it again? Maybe we should give our initial approach or another another shot. Long Yun will surely see reason if he shows foolishness again, right? Bring in the stick. He has shown that he's respond to goodwill and kind words, clearly. We must present him a show of force, and he will come quickly come to realize his inferiority. Resulting in a swift surrender, which I don't want to do, offer the carrot. Well, the first attempt failed, there's still good pr old proverb, money talks. Well, he may present himself as a great national celebrator. Nothing is but another petty warlord. With the bribes and, and promises, he should be, be brought to submission. Mm, you know what? What if I don't do anything? What if I don't give him money? Because we need the money. The words, she rode his flying pigeon back to school. It had become part of his daily routine and rel relished the solitude and exercise it brought. He would hum tunes on his way. The daily biking had made him fit, more fit than his arduous work on the fields. He found friends at schools, people who thought and talked like him. He fit in at school, more importantly. He was learning. She caught on quickly to reading and excelled far more than other students. His teacher was determined to teach and she taught well. Lee had settled into her job well. The students were moving along better than expected and she loved the environment, harsh as it may be. The land might not be full of the rugged romanticism she loved, but it paid the bills unexpectedly. Most of the youth were eager to learn the language, arithmetic, and history. Attendance was solid and her colleagues worked almost as hard as her. Maybe she thought to herself, maybe China stood a chance in time. The students would learn to read and the teachers would grow gray. Across China, the illiterate turned into the illiterate. Education was a talk of policymakers in the capital. The Japanese secretly admired the grand modernization of the schools in China. Somewhere in a sleepy town in western China, the light of knowledge burns bright. Nice. Now, if we could try again. I don't want to try again. That's fine with me. There you go. Try again. The president's pen pal. A gal licked another envelope. What's one more chance? The question hung in the air. What actually was one more chance? Precious time in budget meetings and at the dinner table, he had exhausted all of his best lines on some insane convict who claims to be the savior of China. Well, at least he doesn't claim to be the brother of Jesus. What was one more chance? One more chance was more legitimacy for a murderous bandit. He t sent the letter back down on the table. He clearly wasn't getting anywhere. How pitiful for the president of China to sit waiting for the response of some warlord. Gao took the letter and tore it to shreds. Perhaps Long Yun, or Logan Yun, <laughs> is just illiterate or just maybe has no regard for all the suffering he tends to cause. It doesn't matter. It was time for a different approach. You don't, you cannot reason with a mad dog. Will you be die fighting against China? Some fools continue to hail the rebel Long Yun as a patriot fighting for China free of foreign imperialism, but we are China. It is a white sun on our banner and is Long's own insurrection that is aimed against China and not the guns of the Japanese. We should make sure the people of Yunnan know that they are only laying down their lives for another warlord's ambition, not for any idealized notion of a free China. The free China is the one that we shall build atop the rubble of this revolt. A China that is free from rebellion, free from warlordism, and free from war. At least for now. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, at least for now. God, well, I wish we had more factories and money. This sucks so much. Ah, I want to go faster, but put the garrisons on alert. Our fighting men in Sichuan and the rest of the southwest must be prepared for whatever may be coming to face them in the days ahead. Rifles to hold and bullets to the fire, not enough, only through vigilance, and maybe violence, can the enemy we can hope to hold the invaders at our gates. Which you do get some more defense, because I wanted to wait to save that one for a little bit later. Um, This is getting a lot better, look at that. Poverty is getting better, but especially basic mechanization. That'd be really good. Oh, hey, just why? Why? And we'll go up to here, which will actually give us more consumer goods. That's actually really good. We definitely need that right now. 
Actually, uh, put the Gerson's on alert. And close out of that, and then... Ah, there goes Goring. Put Japan on short notice. Our associates across the sea not, need not concern themselves with this matter. An unruly province or two as well within our capacity to handle alone still, though. Tokyo you shall be sent. Uh, notice. If so, only that their eyes may feast upon our impending victory in Yunnan, and know the strength of our regime. There goes Goring. Yunnan will be the place we prove our mettle to the watching world. Well, we'll see. There we go. Technology? Let's do it. Uh, industry? I love industry. We're gonna keep going with that one. Production. Yeah, I don't wanna do that stuff. Talk with Long Yun. I don't think that's really gonna be worth it. Uh, nothing there. I can't clamp down on corruption, huh? Sucks. But, if we have to, we can always go partial mobilization, which I really don't want to do. I really don't want to hurt our PP. We already don't get that much. Lockdown and movement of trading people. Ready the men. I like that. Last old man put down the mad dog. Cool. Oh, we have 5,100 fuel. It's going to be worse. Wow, minus 19 million is not very good. Cool. And let the Japanese know what's going on. I followed up with partial mobilization. The Battle of Barcelona. It is an unfortunate reality that to keep the peace we must prepare for war. Long's anti-Japanese crusade forces are hand to reintroduce conscription. To ensure that enough able-bodied men are ready for the putting down of this insidious treason. Unfortunately, conscripting will no doubt or conscription will no doubt be exploited by our enemies in the calumnious uh, propaganda against the regime. Fortunately, after we are done, there will be no enemies of the regime left. You'd hope so, but what if we are the enemies of ourselves? Which doesn't make any sense, but just go along with it. More defense? Yes, please. And also, oh wait, what happened to our? Hey, if you like to read about better research facilities, please go ahead. That's awesome. Awesome. Oh, we lose political power. That's not awesome. Um, what happened to our population? Because we can make a plane. We have three early fighters. We're advancing quite rapidly. I know, quite rapidly. But uh, okay. I'm not sure how this was upgraded, but I'll take it. I'll I'll gladly take it. Russia's reunifying, which is fine with us. And then lockdown movement of trade and people. The border with Yunnan must be locked down tight. No more goods or people shall be permitted to cross, lest the enemies within and when enemies without return to fraternize and coordinate. We will starve the hills of Yunnan of men of rifle and rice, so that when war comes, there shall be not but a scant few skeletons with pitchforks that line up against us. The shield broke? Well, it looks like it is definitely an uneasy peace. That sucks for everybody. The Cape Town Massacre, huh? Cool. I need to play some someday, but we'll see. Ah, uh, Mr. Haircut Man. Funny man. Funny, 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 funny. Let's see, 38%, 33%, that's not good. Partial mobilization, so be it. And we have to we have to get through this part just because, uh, are we demobilizing? Oh, we're actually mobilizing a little bit more, look at that. We have to get through this part, and then we have to go to war with them, I think. One, two, three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have all these, and then we go to war. So, lockdown, trade, and movement. And before we lose that, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that we actually can use our four planes here. So, yeah. There you go, there you go, there you go. There you go. Give it to the better group. And ready the men. Our brave leader shall pay a visit to Chengdu to meet with the fine warriors that shall deliver China its next victory. As well with the generals leading them. A great procession of infantry and the best China has to offer will march through the streets and cow the rebellious minded to submission. Every division along the frontier of Yunnan must be fully drilled and prepared for the coming rebellion. Pretty much. Looking actually not too bad on equipment now. Artillery, early main battle tanks. Not bad. We'll get one more there. Um, there you go, do that. I want to get the cast done. Get some more artillery as well. I guess you can go eh, three a week is not great, but whatever. Yeah, that's the last one next. Cool. We got a lot of PP. Followed up with one last ultimatum. The insurrection simply cannot win. Long Yun does not have the men or the equipment to stand up to us. His people are starving and under-equipped. His armies are a fraction of ours in number. We have the whole of East Asia standing at our backs and he has no one. The insurrection will fail and all of the deaths it will cause me will be nothing. How and why can he continue along this road knowing what will happen, knowing that it will come to nothing? He will have one more chance to make or die. War or peace. It is the mad dog's decision now. That's a little bit ahead of time, actually. Let's grab that, then. We have a lot of manpower now, look at that. That is not too shabby. Cool. Cool, and anything else here? No. This one? No. Nothing about GDP gain or anything like that, so no. Nope, nothing we can really do. We need more money though. All is well, well, I guess technically all is not well. <sighs> hey, we have a million manpower now. That's not bad. 0.3% of our core population. Not bad, could be better, but not bad. I guess with 
actually, the small army. Maybe this was edited maybe a little bit. I don't know, with the Japanese, but we'll see. And then, what are we going to do? We're going to do put down the mad dog. Every last rubble in Yunnan will die, and their names will be erased from history. They will not be martyrs, and anyone who try to make the martyrs will hang alongside them. They will not win. They cannot win. Our victory is already assured, and the rebels' lives are already on an irreversible trajectory towards their end. We will kill every human being alive in Yunnan who would take up arms against us, every human being, and every mad dog. Cool. Now, without anything to do here, we're still getting more PP, which is nice. So, actually, level 3 is not too bad for technological self-sufficiency. And then we have... Oh, 100%. Oh, god dang it. We need more money here. Arr. I don't want to cut down civilian spending. We need that. Well, I guess we technically don't need the PP, but we need to build, build, build. I don't want to hurt our ability to build, so. Couldn't buy the Japanese corporations. Eh, I don't want to increase the Japanese influence here, though. No. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. That's it. That is the message in its entirety. Silence for the Yuan. President Gao Zongwu adjusted his glasses and reread the muddy scrap of paper. A singular no return to Sarah. This is what the inter-regional diplomacy had come to at last, or at least. President Gao mused that there was no per uh, perfunctory BS to dig through, as was so often the case with the Japanese. Is there any mention of our terms, asked the indignant legislator, interrupting the president's train of thought? No. But it's been eight hours writing them. Then perhaps you should use your time more effectively, quipped a member of an opposing clique. Silence once again returned to the Yuan. Well, what should we do now? inquired a junior legislator, their voice tinted with anxiety. Are we going to send another ultimatum and renegotiate with different terms? President Gao Zong Wu thought for a moment, carefully considering his options. Long Wu Yun would not accept anything other than a severed head in the whole of China. <clears throat> War was inevitable. The president turned back to the junior legislator and delivered his response No. Not today. Hey, minus 1.6 billion. That's getting better. But yeah, I, oh, when I do fade and fade outs, there's more comments for me to go more and more reformists, which we're trying to do, man. We're trying to get everything done. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. 19, that's not too shabby. Do we have enough money yet? No, we don't. God dang it. Ah. That might be really, really good for us to do. That is so strong. But we need 400 million to go up to here, too, though. And I got more infantry equipment. We're going to keep rushing through this stuff for now, because we need to. Getting better, getting a little better. Put the mag dog down, and then I guess after this, I'll we'll, keep getting more civvies for the energy for that stuff. And also help us out as well. So the oil shang shang li celebrate for we have found deposits of the so-called black gold in our own territory. There must be more hiding beneath the soil. With this discovery, we, we take another step towards self-sufficiency and the ability to break the Japanese grip, or from the Japanese grip. Yeah. Um. There's nothing else we can do, so I guess we gotta wait. Declare war. Oh. Cool. At least our GDP. Oh, look at that! Our GDP growth is now bigger than our actual debt. So eventually, this will not look too bad. Actually, do we have 400 million? I just I want to do reforms. Nah. Oh wait. So are we? Are we the ones expected to go in? This is a bad, bad, bad idea. Can I not? Um. This is weird. I can't make a front line here. Is that supposed to happen? Huh. Oh, well, okay, whatever. Oh, wow, look at this. State of emergency. While the western reaches of our authority have never been peaceful and minor rebellions are all but expected, no one in China remembers a war quite like this, Long Yun. A half-forgotten ghost of the Second World War has madly set both himself and the entire southwest against the government. While Long's chances against the might of China are zero, the border forces have non the, nonetheless come under harsh attack and have an exodus of thousands fleeing the new front, now flooding into the cities. The nation is in crisis, but we should not be over... Oh, not be overcome. The city has issued a declaration of emergency measures to see us put this mad dog down. Oh, hello. Thailand, hi. How are you doing? Hmm. You guys go right there, maybe? Why is it lagging so bad? Oh, God. That's really that's really bad, actually. How about you guys all go in there? Can you guys actually win here, maybe? I mean, with these guys, these are our, like, armored guys, so I, I definitely want to send them, like, this way. So, we'll see what happens. Not too bad. How strong are these guys? Are they... Oh, they're actually half decent, I suppose. I'll take half and then go right there. But you go right there. Nice. Very weird, but okay. And garrison alerted. Alright. 
State of emergency. The evacuation, you get more you lose weekly war support. I don't like that. Security on the road, more war support, remove millies, civil oh, guarantee the food supply, that's not bad. Evacuation in progress. Uh, the first real test. I like that one. Minimize casualties. Meh. Troops are disciplined. Army. Getting more oh, one year draft. I don't want to do that one. That hurts our population or hurts our up uh, stats. Troops are disciplined, it's actually pretty good. Weapons testing. Ooh, Army of Profession does go up. That's really good to get. Combat schooling is also extremely good to get. Wow. Never let a good crisis go to waste. We will defeat Long Yun. Stability. Critical population, manpower, manpower, patriotic news. Uh, that's not too bad. That actually was really good. The Pan-Asiatic Security Council. We get more political power, stability, war support. Uh, increase Olgar influence. Whoa. Purge a committee. Committee purge. Weekly stability plus 15% for 60... Holy crap! That's really strong. That's extremely strong. That's like eight weeks. Bro, we gotta go there. I'll never let a good crisis go to waste. I want army professionalism, but 15%? The unexpected war with Long Union is taking place under our leadership, and as such, we have come under fire as the rivals seek to pin blame onto us. Even, but in this chaos, we have the opportunity to solidify our control both of the Yuan and the people's hearts and minds. Winning the war will hardly be an issue. Our generals are sure of that. What must be focused on ensuring that we do not let this precious opportunity go to waste? Let's up the hounds of propaganda. Long Yun has done us a favor. Nice. Oh, that's not good. Oh, head on down here too then. Oh, we have a hole here? That's not good. Wow, these guys are actually pretty tough. Our guys are defeated, huh? Oh, uh, did they get a buff? They might have gotten a buff. Hey, you know what? If it takes longer and longer for us, I'm not really too worried. Oh, they have a lot less they have a million manpower, but that looks pretty pretty bad. A lot of weekly, less weekly manpower. Oh, doesn't look like we can win then. Alright, well, so be it. Uh, hang out here and hold. You know, let them come in. Let them come in. It makes us weak stronger. Well, if you're gonna lose, hardly. Eh, well, these guys aren't very good, so I'm not really too worried about this. Let them come in. Let's put in the population. Oh, come on, guys. You know what? Then hold. All of you guys suck. Why can't we make a front line? Now we can make a front line. Oh, that's stupid. No, 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 no. You ding dong's hole. Yeah, that's that's stupid that we couldn't make a front line earlier. Cool. And over here, we'll probably go with what? Uh, one of these two. This seems pretty okay to go from here to there. Especially if we stay right here, they'll probably attack us, which is actually not too bad. Uh, oh, there we go. Increase. Yes. Yes. If you want to rebuild that, please go ahead. Research speed. More political power. We already have pretty good amount of political power. Let's get more construction speed then. Request Japanese officers. Increase pro Japanese sentiment. I could probably do that one. Increase weapons. I don't want to increase their sentiment, so. Let them. Do they not want to walk into here? I mean, it's up to these guys, so. The Pan Asian Security Council. The government of China has finally announced the foundation or the founding of the Pan Asian Security Council. This will be the government's primary weapon or primary weapon against the traitors inside of China, while the new army fights in the borders. If we secure Chinese people from Japanese, we have to first secure Chinese from other Chinese. Makes sense. This is we're developing our land auction too. Come on, guys, attack me! Actually, are you guys? Um, up to twenty-five divisions. Stockpile. They have no guns. So many damage you do, they cannot recover from. Which kind of is similar to us, but a community bank. Why not? Tao Xuan Village in Anhui Province is famous for very little. It is its local speciality, Lava Tofu, and it boasts spectacular natural beauty, but the picturesque mountain village has become famous for a different reason. It is the site of China's first modern mutual aid bank. The Tao Xuan Co-op started in life as a simple village cooperative shop. Buying goods in bulk to deliver cheap prices to its members, it was a source of small luxuries for the villagers, as well as a community meeting place for the young, old, and financially challenged. The cooperative became a mutual fund when it gave a couple young a, a young couple a small loan to start their own farm. The investment was sound, and soon the cooperative started issuing loans to people across Anhui province. The Taishuan Co-op and Mutual Aid Bank has doubled in size over the last year, all while keeping its democratic organization, its local focus, and its commitment to community well-being over the pursuit of endless profit. With new branches in the neighboring villages of Hong Kong and Zhidi, the bank has changed its name to the Social Credit Bank. It takes its name from the unusual method of issuing loans and handling credit. It decides on who to give loans based not on financial history, but the accounts of their neighbors. 
A young farmer who has had his loan application rejected by three city banks came to social credit, and in a quick interview with his neighbors found out to be a hard-working and trustworthy soul. They gave him the loan, and he hasn't missed a payment since. It gives out overdrafts and sets interest rates to reward good citizens and reward businesses that work for the common good. Most notably, Social Group Bank has issued an interest-free loan to the Hang Shi doctor to set up a village surgery in Tashuan. In a time of growing social stratification, one thing brings hope to the peasantry of Anhui, everyone from the free farmer to the single mother. The smiling child and the toothless elder agree, social credit is a wonderful thing. We all love social credit. Hmm. Are they moving in somewhere? Zunyi? Um... All right. Well, I guess I'll send you guys back to them. Okay. Where are they going? Keep these guys in place. That's seven divisions. That's a lot of dudes, not gonna lie. I mean, our divisions suck, don't get me wrong. And, oh, Samara actually unified the place, huh? pretty good that is pretty darn decent not gonna lie even if they spread out they can't do anything here so pretty risky using that division I just put pull it up here but that's all right Pan Asian Security Council loyal enthusiasm the government of China has finally announced a foundation of the founding of the council I already read this one so my bad and then we'll go ahead and do this one too Purge a committee. It has come to our attention that if we desire a pure and secure committee to purge the traitors in China, we must make sure that the committee is we must is we must take measures to make sure the ones we are purging aren't doing the ones purging. We have to purge the committee from unwanted and dangerous thoughts. If we fail too, our state may find itself at ends with our pan Asian allies, something wholly undesirable. I like the stability a whole lot. The Committee of that Pan-Asian Unity. Rows and rows of diplomats filed into the Grand Assembly Room. Flags from every sphere aligned nation adorned the walls with the respective representatives gathered underneath. The words of a dozen different languages intermingled in the air. The hall was a beautiful patchwork of all the colors and sounds of Asia. With a flourish, a Japanese representative called the first meeting of the Committee of Pan-Asian Unity to order. The major point of discussion was, as expected, the Western insurrection. What are the options? What can we do to help? Who is Long Yun again? Endless variations on these phrases bounced around the room colliding with each other. The translators struggled to keep pace with the conversation, sometimes resorting to slang and blunt simplicity to communicate. The Chinese delegation caused quite a stir when they seemingly responded to what is the Republic of China government doing to ensure continued grain exports with Fu go into ocean. <laughs> Thankfully, the optimism of the committee transcended language barriers. Many officials exchanged stories and jokes, cracked smiles, and shared a laugh or two. Even the staunchest reformists in the Ch Chinese delegation, who had previously considered throwing themselves out of the windows, found themselves caught up in the fun. Inevitably, however, the subject turned back towards the southwestern situation. With grim solemnity, every member of the South e of the East Asian Co Prosperity Sphere pledged standing together against a growing threat. Perhaps that Pan Asianism is not yet dead. But we'll see, because we're going to purge the committee completely. How have we not done. Oh, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. That's something to be celebrated. Great. You're going to hold, because they still want to attack us, I bet. So Everyone's going to hold. Let them starve. You can try to move out, but that attrition is not enough for what they're doing here. That's really just not enough. That makes literally no sense. You're not going to encircle us here. All right, at a time like this, boost it up. Boost it up. Oh, that's, that's actually really good. Wow. That is not too bad. Um, anything else we can do here? Invest in Chinese companies? Ooh, we could risk that. Reformists in the cabinet, that's not bad. Do get more war support, which would be we're actually really good right now. I don't really care about stability too much. Um, modify a faction recovery dependency. We could. Modernization awareness campaign, more stability and war support. Um, things start getting better for groups. Let's do this one. Modernization awareness. Don't let them encircle us. Do not let them encircle us. Come on. God dang it. Get in there. Good. Okay. We got him in there. You're going to keep him pinned here. This is not easy. God dang it. You pieces of garbage. Well, I mean, this is... This is not easy. This is really not easy. Holy crap, they're spreading out like cancer. Um, Concentrate you guys here, maybe somewhere. I'm not really... I have no idea where to concentrate you guys. Because once they start flooding through here, I mean, they're not taking any sort of damage at all. 
Go in, go in, go in. I know these guys can go in and here, so. How are they not taking any more damage? Or any sort of attrition here? This is beyond me. This is not easy. Um, reforms in the cabin. I would like to do that one, though. Hmm. Nothing, 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 nothing. Actually, and we need to do all as well for that stuff, so. Uh, uh, sure, no, why not? I will try it. Oh, so these people have the negative opinion, negative opinion, positive opinion. Nice. Oh, well, it is what it is. Hey, at least we can win a battle here. Discontent in the committee. The committee convened for the usual meeting, but this time, something was different. The flags upon the walls, once so vibrant, were dull. The chatter of the delegations, once so lively, was muted. The optimism, once so transcendent, was darkened. The war had taken its toll on everyone else in the room. The Japanese representatives gave a few curt words and brought the meeting to order. The usual discussions began anew, tended with unusual doubt. How do our losses look? How much territory have we gained? Have we considered negotiations? This infuriated the Chinese delegation. The war, they claimed, was going perfectly well. The losses were unfortunate, and it may have stalemated once or twice, but victory was inevitable. The reformers, in particular, made a great showing of accusing other nations of failure to offer enough support. Without foreign so-called assistance, we could have won long ago, one fiery official yelled. Thankfully, a particularly bright translator chose to admit it. The meeting was still to the relief of all attendees productive. The initial faith in the committee, however, had drawn dry. It remained to be seen if the committee of Pan-Asian Unity has the strength to endure this war. That could have gone better, but we'll conclude this episode with this one and the reading of one more focus, such as the first real test. This insurrection will be the first major combat opportunity for many of the men in the ranks, and the first in decades for all that for the rest. The Chinese government has never faced a challenge like this before, and it's up to us to ensure that our attack track record begins with a victory. Perhaps a hai, Han Jian Long Yun will be of some service to China after all. It'll be his rebellion that makes our nation ready for war again and shows the world that China's strength is not to be ignored. And we've taken a lot of casualties. A lot of casualties, but I don't understand how he's not taking any more attrition. That doesn't make any sense to me, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already, and I will see you tomorrow as we will be struggling against Long Yum. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.